Hey guys, welcome to Canada. Um, I literally just finished my solo run across the Rocky Mountains. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what was in my kit and how I pack for fast packing. Um, so this one was obviously in the mountains and really intense backcountry and obviously due to COVID um, some of the stretches were even longer so I did have to pack pretty well as you can see but um, the idea of fast packing is to go as fast and light as possible um, but obviously staying safe. So I'll start with the outside of my pack. Um, poles, I always use trekking poles. Um, it's mainly for taking some of the weight off my legs and kind of distributing that work through my arms. But also on gnarly trails when you've got the backpack, uh, it does make movement a lot easier that you can balance a little bit with the poles. Um, so they're, I really, I really enjoy using them. It's individual preference, but um, with fast packing, I certainly like them. There's a roll of duct tape on here and that's, you know, just a really easy place to put your duct tape. Uh, unique to this trip, of course, is the bears. So I've got my bear spray hanging off the side here. Um, the safety fell off while I was just leaving the van and I can certainly promise you that this stuff is extremely effective. Uh, don't stand in the way with it. I had to evacuate the van pretty quickly. Um, these outside pockets are the stuff that I'm going to be using as I'm going that I don't want to have to take off my pack. So I've got like electrolytes, I've got a little water bladder, and um, bear bell that was hanging on my pack, that just lets the bears and mountain lions and wolves and everyone else know that you're coming so I didn't see as many of them. Uh, and just a water filter that I can use on the go. And on the other side, that's actually where I kept my camera, which is obviously here right now. So, and some mosquito repellent, um, a dry bag. Um, if I was going through a river crossing, I just need to put my camera away really quickly. Uh, the next stuff that I'm using the most is obviously the straps that are right by my shoulders. And here is where I did keep my phone. I got my sunglasses case, compass, whistle, just like basic stuff that you don't want to have to go looking for. And here was pretty much always um, energy bars, which I've eaten. Um, with the fast packing backpacks, the biggest difference between a fast packing backpack and a hiking backpack is the fit and the lightness. Um, this backpack from Montaigne, it's a trailblazer, it's actually designed specifically for fast packing. So it's got this harness system that helps the fit be quite unique to you and of course the adjustable back so that you can adjust it to your height. Um, once you go from hiking to running, the fit of your backpack just becomes so much more important because it's going to be bouncing around on your shoulders if it doesn't fit you specifically and it leads to bruising and blistering which I can attest to having done a few of these things. Um, so being able to like really dial in your fit quite well is, is one of the main things I would look for in a fast packing backpack. And the top lid, again, stuff I want to access throughout the day. So I've got sunscreen, one of my most important pieces of kit, mosquito repellent, and my spot tracker. That's something that you want to keep, you know, again, you don't want to have to dig around for in case you do need it. So one of the first things at the top of my bag is always going to be my waterproof. Um, in the Rocky Mountains, the storms come and they come really quick. So I just want to be able to like quickly be able to get all my waterproof. Um, this is easily my most important piece of kit for moving in the mountains is a good waterproof Gore-Tex jacket. I think if you're going to spend money on one thing, that is actually what I would pick for waterproof. Um, toiletries, first aid, obviously try to go minimal. And next to that is a little dry bag and that's full of all my gadgets. Um, the stretches were sometimes quite a few days in between and then so I've got like battery packs and all the cables and um, batteries for my camera and stuff like that. Water bottle. I like these ones because you can put boiling water in them and then tuck that into your sleeping bag and stay really warm at night. That was kind of my biggest hack. And then I just carried um, water bladders 
because they don't take up any space and if you do for some reason need to like load up on quite a lot of water like if you're going over a ridge that you're going to be on for ages then it's nice to have that extra capacity without wasting space in your bag in between and then most of my kit stays in a big dry bag that I've got compressed down so what do we got um, by the way, I've just finished this trip, so the laundry hasn't been done. Uh, wool socks for sleeping in. Um, this is just a, a base layer that, again, I sleep in, just a thermal. Um, fleece tights, that's for sleeping in, and then sometimes in the morning I'd be wearing them for like an hour or so until it got warm again. Uh, the Rockies do get insanely cold at night, so I do have to pack pretty heavy for this trip, which is a disadvantage you know when I did the Atlas Mountains I had literally less than half this amount of stuff uh, my insulated jacket um, again one of the most essential pieces of kit that you're gonna have is, is good insulation and then my sleep system so my sleep system is a really warm sleeping bag so this one's rated I think to minus 12 it's women specific which means that it's a bit smaller and it's really snug I absolutely love this bag um, it's hydrophobic and that means that I can bivy out in it um, it can get wet and that's okay um, and in the Rockies you're kind of always wet so that was pretty essential to me and then for this adventure I tried a new bivy for the first time um, normally I would just bivy as in sleep out in my sleeping bag underneath maybe an emergency tarp or just maybe underneath the starry sky but in the Rockies we get pretty mega thunderstorms and then of course the mosquitoes that I mentioned which meant that I had to have a real shelter so I went for a compromise on this one and used a, biv a hooped bivy um, it was really claustrophobic when the storms came and I had to zip the hood closed like honestly I couldn't last that long doing it you feel like you're running out of oxygen but it did keep me dry it did keep the mosquitoes out and it was about half the size and weight of my lightest one person tent so you know I would go with it again but it's definitely a lot better when you can just do without the closure bivy and just you know sleep out under the stars so yeah hooped bivy more thermal layers again this trip I had to carry more than I normally would um, I carried this um, polar tech this fleece that I'm wearing and that basically I already pulled out and that's plus my jacket and that's what I genuinely needed to be alive at night like it froze most nights um, so that's quite a lot to carry and that's the biggest disadvantage of doing big mountain runs is that you can't get away with not taking all this extra stuff certainly if you sleep as cold as I do um, the poles for my baby just kind of sit in the back there Gore-Tex gloves insulated that's what we got Gore-Tex trousers pants to put on uh, would it really, really rains? Um, they're also really good for sitting on when you're glissading down the snowy banks. Everything I just really like pack quite tight at the bottom of this bag, and then like if the bag's packed really well, it's still gonna fit a lot better. Uh, inside a dry bag here is my sleeping mat. Um, you can obviously go lighter if it's warmer, but I was pretty cold, so that's that's my sleeping pad. Uh, and then I've got my little stove. So there's the tin mug, tin pot, and the stove, and some, probably some coffee and hot chocolate or something are mixed up in there. Maybe breakfast. And little cans of fuel. So that's my entire cooking system. I wouldn't personally go into mountains without a cooking system, because if you do get really cold, um, being able to get yourself something warm is gonna be really essential. Uh, and for longer trips, I find it does make more sense to have dehydrated food and a stove than it does to carry just ready-made meals. Um, it is kind of personal preference and you do kind of have to geek out on the weight differences of having ready-made food versus having to carry all this fuel and stuff. Um, but I think if I'm going for more than three days, it makes more sense to do dehydrated and a stove. And like I said, you know, it's a safety thing for me having a stove if I go into altitude. So. You know, I had to do quite a lot of glacial river crossings and get really cold sometimes. So um, being able to get yourself warm is really important. Uh, again, unique to this trip, bear safety. So I have a lot of ropes to make bear hangs with. My bear hangs are always terrible, but 
Um, you absolutely have to in the Rockies um, hang your food and anything that smells from a tree 30 meters away from your campsite. I actually dehydrated my own food for this adventure, uh, which actually was really time consuming, but it was way better than the store-bought stuff, so I was pretty happy. And they're all just in these Mylar bags, which are meant to be kind of scent-proof for the bears. I'm not convinced. Um, also in the hood of my backpack, the most important adventure tool known to man, the spork. Um, I got my National Parks Pass. Um, things like um, water purifiers, just in case I lost my filter. Oops. There's a Gore-Tex repair stuck to it. So that's a lot of good that's gonna do it. Um, very basic first aid, very basic repair kits and headphones and a tiny knife and that's all that i keep in the lid there i'm really happy with the kit that i brought i don't actually think i would have changed anything about this one uh, it's kind of like the ultimate freedom to have such a light kit to be able to move in the mountains with you know only a 30 liter backpack but it's light enough that you can run with you know, it makes movement really good and easy. It means that you can go further, faster, and that's kind of what the point of fast packing is versus a traditional hiking setup. So I'm really happy with my kit, um, but I'm also happy to be done.